All right, this is fifth grade, module five, lesson 17. And in this lesson, we're gonna continue classifying two-dimensional figures, specifically quadrilaterals. Uh, this time, we're gonna focus on parallelograms and clarify what that means. Uh, so the idea is, first we gotta talk about, well, what is a parallelogram? Well, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. And that's the idea is uh, it's, it's gonna look like a rectangle or a square where the opposite sides are parallel and these opposite sides are parallel. But a parallelogram does not require 90 degree angle. So sometimes people call it a rectangle in a windstorm. Uh, you know, that's kind of a thing. Um, uh, and that's what a parallelogram is. So let's get started on this. So it says angle A measures 60 degrees. So they're saying that this little angle right there is 60 degrees. And then we're supposed to extend the rays, boom, boom, and extend them to draw a parallelogram of some sort on this grid paper. Okay, so I'm going to grab my black ink and let's say, okay, well, let's extend. Uh, and, and it doesn't say how far we have to go. It just says extend them. And it also doesn't say that everything has to be congruent. So there's my parallelogram. And we know it's a parallelogram because the opposite sides, these guys are parallel with one another. And then these guys are parallel with one another. So we now know that this is an official parallelogram. Okay. Now the next question says, what are the angles? What are the measures of these angles? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a larger version of this and let's put it right here. And just to recap, we said, okay, one, two, three, we're going to make this go like this and this go like this. And there is our parallelogram. And remember, this is not the only possible rectangle we, or parallelogram that we could have drawn. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit because we are supposed to figure out the angles of angle B, C, and D. Now, the first thing, parents and teachers, I want to point out is I put the order like this. You could have put the order in a different way. It does not matter. Um, your answers will be a little bit different depending on where you put your letters, but uh, it's the math itself is going to be the same. And so we see that we were told that this right here is 60 degrees. So from our experience, we know that this line and this line are parallel. And we also know that these two angles, these two interior angles to the parallel lines, these two interior angles have to have a sum of 180. So if this guy is 60, that means this angle right here has to be 120 degrees. Another thing we learned is we learned um, from our problem set is that the opposite angles are equal. So if we know that this guy is 60, that means the opposite angle is also 60 degrees. And then Here's an opposite angle right here. So these angles are uh, um, both 120 degrees. Now, you might be saying, wait a second. How did you use these two parallel lines to decide uh, that 60 plus this missing angle had to be 180? Well, if we had chosen this, ang this line and this line, well, that makes these two angles be the interior angles of your parallel lines, and 60 plus 120 is equal to 180. So it turns out, no matter how we chose to do it, we would have gotten the same answer. So here it says, WXYZ is a parallelogram. So that tells us that these two sides are parallel with one another, and these two sides are parallel with one another. But we're kind of told, hey, but it's not drawn to scale. So that means we can't use a ruler. 
to measure. We actually have to just use our mathematical minds. So using what we know about parallelograms, we're supposed to uh, give the measures of xy, and where is xy? xy is right here, and we're supposed to give the measure of yz right here. Well, the idea is, since it's a parallelogram, that means the opposite sides are going to be congruent or the same length. So if this guy is 3 centimeters, that means this guy is also 3 centimeters. Same thing. That means this guy has to be 6 centimeters. Since this base down here is 6 centimeters, that means this guy has to be 6 centimeters. Now here it says WXY is 113 degrees. So that's this angle right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a larger version of that. And we're told that this angle, WXY, right here is 113 degrees. We're supposed to figure out all these other angles. Okay, so let's first write in that this angle right here is 113 degrees. 113 degrees. Now because... Well, let's see, this happens to be d angle WZY. Um, oh, here it is. YZW is the same thing as WZY. So that means this angle right here, we know that these opposite angles are congruent. So that means this guy right here has to be 113 degrees. So we could fill that in real quick, huh? XYZ, X. Y, oh, whoa, X, Y, Z, all right? So that's this angle right here. Now, big thing I want you all to notice, parents and teachers, I went out of order. I filled in the easy information first. So let your students do that. They don't have to go in order if they don't want. But we're supposed to figure out this angle. Well, we remember that this line is parallel to this line and that the interior angles to those parallel lines right here, they have to have a sum of 180 degrees. So 113 plus something has to equal 180. And so we use a little bit of subtraction, and we can see that that missing angle is equal to 67 degrees. So that tells us that this angle right here has to be 67 degrees. That's the rule about parallelograms. So that's, I could put 67 degrees right there. And then the last one, ZWX. So ZWX. So that's this angle. Well, opposite angles are congruent. So that means this angle is also 67 degrees. So here, uh, Jack measured some segments using a ruler, and he found that the line segment uh, WY is 8 centimeters. So that means going from here to here, W to Y is 8 centimeters. And it's going to be a little tricky where I write that, so I'm going to put it right here, 8 centimeters. And that MZ, the line segment MZ, is 3 centimeters. So where is that? MZ, right here, MZ. This guy right here is 3 centimeters. So we're supposed to give the lengths of all these missing lines. So WM, where is WM? So WM is right halfway across, right? So one of the things we've learned is that in a parallelogram, these diagonals don't have to be equal. Like, they kind of look equal in this figure, but they don't have to be. Uh, you can draw some parallelograms where it is easy to agree that this diagonal and this diagonal are not the same length, okay? Uh, so they don't have to be equal, but we are told that if this length right here, um, well, we're told if the entire length is 8, that means it's been cut in half on both sides, so that means this guy is 4 centimeters, and this guy is 4 centimeters. That's how we get a length of 8. So WM right here is equal to 4 centimeters. MY 
is the other four centimeters because the whole thing is eight. Uh, so that means it's been cut into halves. Four plus four is eight. XM, well, if we're told that MZ right here is three, that means by law, this other side also has to be three centimeters. And so the last one, XZ, so that means going from here all the way to here is six centimeters because three plus three is six. So they kind of guide us through step by step. Now, parents and teachers, I got to tell you, uh, a great thing to do is to go to geogebra.org, geogebra.org, and search for properties properties of parallelograms and you got to spell it out correctly but um, if you search for properties of parallelograms at geogebra.org you'll find some really beautiful applets that allow you using this dynamic software to just kind of create as many different parallelograms as you want just dynamically just create a stretchy parallelogram and you'll notice that the properties always stay true so using those properties, we're supposed to explain why all parallelograms are trapezoids. Well, what's the rule for a trapezoid? So the rule for a trapezoid is that it's a quadrilateral where at least one pair of opposite sides is parallel, whereas a parallelogram is it's a, a quadrilateral, so they both start with the same premise, but a parallelogram, both sides opposite sides. Both uh, pairs of opposite sides have to be parallel. So if you draw a parallelogram, and let's draw the best one I can do. That's not totally perfect, but that's pretty good. All right. So in a parallelogram, this side is parallel with that side, and this side is parallel with that side. So I've got a quadrilateral, meaning four sides in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So in a trapezoid, it says at least one pair of opposite sides. So do I have at least one? Yeah, I have at least one pair of opposite sides. So that means every time I draw a parallelogram, it's going to have two pairs of opposite sides. I've always satisfied the rule for a trapezoid, meaning um, it has at least one pair of opposite sides. Now here's a famous misunderstanding. Teresa says that because the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other, that means they get each of the diagonals are cut in half. If one diagonal is 4.2 centimeters, the other diagonal must be half that length. Basically, let's just draw a parallelogram and I'll draw, oh boy, that's not a very good parallelogram yet. There, that's a pretty good parallelogram. So there's my parallelogram. And she's saying that if this length right here is 4.2 centimeters, she's saying that the other diagonal, meaning this one, has to be half of that length. Well, 4.2 divided by 2 is 2.1. So she's saying if the blue diagonal is 4.2, then the red diagonal has to be 2.1. Totally wrong. What, what the truth is, is if this blue one is 4.2 centimeters, that means it's broken up into two pieces. 2.1 and 2.1, half. If the entire length is 4.2, you can divide by 2 to get 2.1, and that tells you that this length is 2.1 and this length is 2.1. And that's really what's true. And that wraps up 5th grade, Module 5, Lesson 17, focusing on parallelograms.